friends, and welcome to episode nine of the Montessori mission. 10 Montessorians, 10 perspectives, 10 communities, 10 questions. And it is my great pleasure for today, for episode nine of the Montessori mission, to have with me Ochoco Prudence Daniels from Mama Hill Montessori in Lagos. And I am so honored to that she's offered to come on the podcast this evening. Uh, well, yeah, it's e afternoon for you and evening for me um, as a powerful voice for Montessori in Africa, in Nigeria. And um, for those of you who don't know uh, Prudence, she um, is the founder of Mama Hill Montessori. She is an entrepreneur. She is a mother and she's a parenting uh, educator. And there at Mama Hill in Lagos, she has a CASA environment and elementary, so all the way to 12 years old. And um, Prudence has a great story of how Montessori came to her through her own children, which um, I've asked her already to share with us during the podcast this evening. And so Prudence, thank you so much. I'm so thrilled you agreed to join me today and um we can't hear we can't wait to hear from an african voice in the Montessori mission thanks so much i'm so honored that you've decided to join me it's my pleasure charlotte thank you for having me <laughs> so um your journey into montessori it's um it sounds really intriguing that you you found it through your children and you and it montessori found you um, so we'd love to hear more. Shall we start with that before we dive into the questions? So I stumbled into Montessori, <laughs> you know, because I was looking for a good school for my children. And um, just like we believe in good education in Africa, even though we don't have it as it should be, but thank God things are getting better and better as the time passes. Um, I stumbled into a school and they were speaking about the total child. That was what caught my attention. Mm. So I sold the school to my husband and we agreed to send my first child there. Yeah. Until the second one came to join. It was really um, very interesting to begin to learn about the Montessori activities, how they get to do the practical life activities. Mm -hmm. And the school was always, you know, getting us, answering our questions, getting us um, involved in what they're doing. Like, okay, this is why they have to do this. And that really caught my interest. And as time passed, I began to see the manifestation in my children. It was really awesome. For example, up until my children were like six or seven, they never broke a glass at home. Mm. Yeah, so, so crazy I, that. It's yeah, like I attributed that to the careful ways they've been shown how to carry a pitcher, how to carry a tray, how to carry a glass of water, and then the pouring activities and all of that. It was, for me, that was really interesting. And um, I decided to delve into, you know, like query it more. And so when uh, that same school was um, opening up a training center a few years ago, I got to hear about it and I was interested, not because I wanted to practice it, but because I love to learn and I work with a lot of children voluntarily. So I just wanted to have, okay, one more knowledge about caring for children, looking after the beautiful gifts of God. And then I got hooked. <laughs> The training was so transformational yeah. throughout most, of, well, through most of the, the modules, it was really very touching. It was, um, you know, many of my colleagues had regrets of how, you know, otherwise they would have raised their children otherwise. Yeah, I also had a few regrets, but I was glad that I found Montessori when I did. And that further enforced my, uh, my drive to pursue Montessori and that is really something worth pursuing, you know? So that really made me, uh, 
I don't want to use the word wild, but it's close to it. Wild for money, sorry. Like, get everything. <laughs> I love that. Yes, my <laughs> friends, uh, my church yeah. members. I want yeah. everyone to hear about Montessori and the impact of Montessori in the lives of little ones. Yeah. That's so. beautiful. I think the next podcast series should be called Wild About Montessori. I think you've given the, you've given me the new name. That's brilliant. And so what's that, what's that time scale prudence from when you said you found it through your first daughter to where you are now? Sort of what was the time scales of having that, then doing your training, as you said, sort of stumbling into it, and then having the school up to up to upper elementary now? What what was that period of time? Oh. Okay, so my first son, my, my, my son is 16 now. Oh, wow, okay. Yes, and um, our school is in the second round of program, like yeah. the second year of yeah. program. So we actually started just before the pandemic, yeah. um, during the pandemic. Oh. And yes, so we're in the second year of the school program. So that's, that's quite a long time. And what that helped me to do was, towards the later part of my daughter's elementary program, she's the younger one. Um, my training helped me to implement Montessori at home with her more than I did with the brother because yeah. I didn't do as much then. Yeah, so that's actually transformed the way I relate with my children um, yeah. and how we practice Montessori at home. Yeah, yeah, very much so. It is, isn't it? It's... Uh... Because Montessori isn't accessible to every child in every school in every country of the world, actually, the principles are so beautiful and so simple. We can do them at home without any Montessori training. We, we don't need or want parents to set up a Montessori environment in their home, but the, but the, the, the pillars of um, respect and reverence for the child. And every guest on the podcast has, has said the same, you know, this, this absolute core of Montessori, of respect and reverence uh, for us to, uh, as adults, to unfold, to allow the, the soul of the child to unfold. That is, we don't even, we don't need to be, know anything about parenting or children or Montessori to do those things we can there, there are so many cultures um around the world who were already doing this you know before it had a label on it that children are treated with such reverence um episode four was Trisha Mokina from the Keras tribe in, um, in New Mexico and um and they have a Montessori training center and opened an early learning center there and as she said that the principles are the, the same. The principles of her tribe are to offer respect and reverence for every child. So I think we can have it in every home. We just need to learn how to get rid of our own conditioning and beliefs. And as you say, you know, a school system or whatever that isn't quite working for every child and just offer love um, and respect. And uh, I think that's what's so positive, isn't it? Because when we can find this knowledge within ourselves, this wisdom in, inside ourselves, then we can just offer it to our child as a gift. Exactly. So even in my own culture, I say to parents, because it's real, because we do Montessori by default, culturally, there are lots of parenting activities that are culturally Montessori. Yeah. It's just that the purpose in that sense is different. Yeah. yeah. So for example, um, families get their children to get to do chores from very young age. They send them on errand, oh, bring this, go bring that. Yeah. You know, tells me about the bring me game in the toddler's community. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but why they're doing that to like have the child um, participate, like be responsible for doing something. In Montessori, we're doing that for the cognitive and the physical and the yeah. independence development. Yeah, so that's why I said the purpose might be different, but we already do Montessori yeah. as a default, yeah. Yeah, it's instinctive, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's just, 
we've complicated parenting so much, haven't we, over the centuries? But actually, this wisdom was already there. You know, yeah. people have been practicing it for thousands of years. You know, before it all got so complicated. I love that. So if then you were, it was your son who went first went into CASA and now he's 16. So that's 13 years, this journey. That's right. Wonderful. Yes. And here you are now. And um, so I think after that wonderful introduction and story of how you came to Montessori, I think we can dive into the questions if, if you feel ready. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. So question one of the Montessori mission, please, Prudence, is what does Montessori mean to you? Mm, that's, that's a very beautiful question. And it, it comes to my heart. Because after I found Montessori, it's become like a light, like a liberatory machine for the world. Like what we all need to be free. Yeah. You know, so it's um, to me, Montessori just keeps me vibrant. If I was hungry and you invited me to talk about Montessori, I don't think I'd bother about the food anymore. <laughs> it's that bad. <laughs> or let me say, it's that good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's wow. very, yeah. So Montessori to me, it's, is a national um, developmental program. So here is why I started my school. I didn't want it to end with my training. And yeah. then I could, of course, go abroad and practice Montessori in some school where I'll earn um, money and when it's converted to my money makes more sense. But I had a call that Africa needs Montessori. Africa needs me to practice Montessori to bring to the children who might never encounter yeah. Montessori in their lifetime. And I'm grateful to God that in less than three years, we're already having um, people who probably will never come across Montessori. Majority of the parents we have, the families at my school today, I just, oh, I was going by and I saw this beautiful place and I wanted to check it out. And then we get talking about Montessori and we start the onboarding process. That's how it's been. So more than 80% of, um, of our school families are people within the community who were curious to know what kind of a school is this? Okay, so they're not already well versed in Montessori. No. It, yeah, that's really interesting. And that's so beautiful that you're bringing, say from people from close by, from your immediate community that... Um, and remember, I had to drive hours to bring my children to Montessori school. But in this case, I thought, okay, if there are people who won't even bother about driving to a Montessori school, why don't we bring yeah. it to them? Yeah, and that makes just, perfect sense. Yeah, they just walk in and it's really tremendous. It's mm. the testimonials are so humbling. Mm. I'm glad that I chose this path. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've got tears in my eyes. That's really lovely. But I love what you said right at the beginning. It's a light. It is freedom. That's what Montessori is. I... Well, that's going to be a quote for the for the podcast. I do like the the quotes from each guest on the on Instagram on the feed. Just little snippets. So that's definitely it. Was the first line you said, I think. So that's already the first quote. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, so question two, please, Prudence. Um, what was your first light bulb moment on your Montessori journey? Okay, so that's like what I said about how my children um, brought me into Montessori. When I was having the, during my training, it dawned on me that I turned out who I was because who I am now because my parents paid attention. And I could just imagine that 
if my parents had a glimpse of Montessori knowledge, I mean, if they had a clue, if they ever came across anything Montessori, it would have been, um, it would have been more than a blast. Super, absolutely it's better than- charged, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So for me, I feel that everybody should come across Montessori. Everybody should encounter Montessori. So, you know, especially during maths, when we're doing, when we're um, studying about the concrete, you know, the line of mathematics from concrete to yeah. abstract. And so that line of preparation, imagine you have to begin from even the sensorial, from language enrichment, you're, you're targeting mathematics, but you are here, you know? Yeah. For me, that's like, how did Madame Montessori do it? How did she have all the answers put in place? And this was over 110 years ago, and it's still valid, and it still delivers results, and it's still, you know, a formula you can just apply. So for me, that, that is so, should I say mysterious? That is so, that is so deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's 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 for me. The, the the enlightenment came bigger when I started taking uh, courses on each of the curriculum area. Yeah, that was it for me. Yeah, you're so right. The indirect preparation for what's to come that that happens in those early practical life materials, the early sensorial materials, everything is building that beautiful solid foundation so the child can do what they feel they need to do next, you know, we can just observe and then we feel in our hearts what they need and we, we guide them through. Yeah, as you said, I mean, she was such a visionary. I mean, it's just insane to think, as you say, over 110 years ago that she saw the whole child, the complete child, the, the wholeness, and she could um, yeah, see this vision of the whole human being. Um, yeah, extraordinary. Yeah, thank you. That was lovely. That was a big light bulb moment. <laughs> so question three, um, please. This is a really good question for you with Wild Montessori. In what ways does Montessori enrich the work that you do? Oh. <laughs> okay, so if you ask that, in what way does Montessori enrich the work that I do? My work is Montessori. <laughs> so there's nothing to be enriched. Yeah. The work itself is Montessori already. So I'm in it, I'm swimming in it, I'm basking in it. Yeah. Everything Montessori. There's, there's no separation. Separate. Yeah. There's no separate. Yes, there's no separate. My work is Montessori. So there's no separate um, activity that Montessori has to en enhance. But personally, the whole transformation has influenced my personality in terms of how I now respond to other adults' situations around me and especially children around me. It's totally different and it's made me a better person. That really resonates deeply with me. I feel the same. For myself that it's 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 made me more of who I want to become of the person I want to be the way I want to give the way I want to serve it's it is extraordinary it's a, a portal for all of us isn't it of yes. of um yeah. how to see the community um you know, 
you burn for what you have to give to the community, to the people who really need it, who need those things. Like, for example, I could have, you know, a better um, situation doing something else, you know, but I enjoy working long hours, aiding, just like Montessori, the aid to life, aiding mm -hmm. little ones to develop, to normalcy and to become their, the best version of themselves. Yeah, so it's really transforming for me as a person, both in my work and in my life. That is, you know, that would be a really good, I don't have a training center, but if I had a training center, that would be such a great quote to have, you know, on the introductory page of a training center's website and also training center's website of, about that, as you said, the transformation in your work, in your life and everything. And I think you're right in relationships in everything, the way we interact with other adults, the way we the way we we handle conflict when it comes up in our life whether it's someone you know being disrespectful to us or somebody else or every scenario it's it's patience of when you're waiting in the really long queue at the supermarket or the post office or whatever you know it gives us it makes us a better person it really does yeah um and i think it also draws out uh the richness in whatever our belief system is as well you know whatever our belief system or, or or religious beliefs are i think it just draws in so much richness from that as well it's not um i just think it's it's part of the fabric it becomes part of the fabric of our lives it feels like to me wonderful so question four now these are the the tricky ones in the middle, okay? So question four is, please, Prudence. Um, when was the first time a child taught, your, taught you something about yourself that you didn't already know? And that was either through direct interaction with them or through an observation. When was the first time a child taught you something about yourself that you didn't, that you didn't know, that you weren't aware of? Mm. Um, with my own children, I really had a rich um, parenting experience with my little children, especially when they were growing up. And I wasn't even doing Montessori then. Yeah. I remember when my boy was about four or, or older, maybe just about four years old, or maybe younger, I can't remember vividly. Um, we can't 100% child proof the entire house, you know. <laughs> this is true, yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah. So on one occasion, my son moved towards a light source and I saw him trying to poke a finger through mm. and then I ran with a lot of, you know, how a mother would respond to that kind of situation. And then I grabbed him and realized that I had overreacted. And then I, I was already in tears and he saw my tears mm -hmm. and he himself, you know, sobered up and started crying. Mm -hmm. you know, so for me, that brought a lot of emotion even deeper than I was already experiencing. Yeah. You know, in retrospect, being in Montessori talks about, you know, the response, the, how your, the, the overall presence of the adult can actually influence the child. The yeah. adult as, um, as um, a material in the, in the classroom as well. So that, that came to light in that sense. Yeah. And then years later, I saw my son um, coaching the sister who was about the same age over the same incident. So I, I saw that he had gotten that lesson and he was passing it 
down to the sister and say, this is very dangerous. You could get electrocuted. And, all of, and he gave that lesson. It was like, wow. So you can actually model. Well, I wasn't even in Montessori then. So that for me was really, um, was enlightening for me to know that when you, whatever you model to your children, they can actually become models of the same things you do, you know, as, as long as they absorb what you have modeled before them. So that, that's, that's um, an experience that I had that speaks to learning something about myself that a child actually taught me. It's a brilliant example. Yeah. Really, really good example. And isn't it so scary when they do that when they're little, stick their fingers in the, uh, it's so scary, isn't it? It was like a joke. I'm like, oh no, you don't play with things like this. And the, uh, and the plug covers you can get to protect the plugs, like they work out within one day how to pull them out so they don't work at all, those plug covers. My, I remember I, I didn't, I can't remember if I had them with my daughter, but I definitely had them with my son. I don't know why I was more nervous second time around. Um, but literally within half an hour of me putting them in, he worked out how to pull it out and he tried to put his finger in the socket anyway. <sighs> yeah, it's that, um, you know, the older ones being becoming guides, you know, whether it's in the home or the classroom, it's just so beautiful to watch, isn't it? And the bond that they form through doing that, you know, whether in the home or the classroom, it's, it's really beautiful to watch. And so um, for question five, please, Prudence, when was the last time a child taught you something about yourself that you weren't aware of, that you didn't know about before? <laughs> <laughs> this one is very funny. This happened recently when my boy came back home from school. Yeah. And um, I was insisting on something being done properly. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he said to me, you know what, this is how I perceive this to be done, but you perceive it in another way. And then he went further to say, you might not see it in my own light because that's how perfectionists behave. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yes, you know, and that just humbled me. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah hear him you know wow. pointing out to me yeah. that i'm being <laughs> over it um, might be a bit too much in that scenario exactly yeah. you know that was really um a reflective moment for me to pause and take a break and look inwards yeah yeah <laughs> That and happened recently. It actually happened recently. <laughs> and did you did you discuss it? Did you have your moment of reflection, as you say, and then discuss it further, or did you discuss it later, or or it didn't? Nothing else needed to be said. You had you had already. Oh, no, no, no. We we went we went. Um, okay, so I let that moment lie, and we laughed yeah. about it, and all of that. And then I went back to say, okay, so and at what point did you realize that? I might be tending towards this and why do you feel so so we actually had a good discussion around around that and it was healthy and yeah. i was happy because if i wasn't in money sorry the african that i am i would be offended yeah i would be very offended that my son yeah you know, it could seem out. disrespectful or... exactly exactly yeah. exactly yeah but um, because of the experience and um the training and the transformation. Yes, I see it as, oh, you know, some of those things that you just have to pause, reflect and work on, yeah. yeah. I would imagine it's challenging. I mean, my children are only four and six. And so my, my six and a half year old, more than six and a half year old is definitely challenging me with that. That's not fair. You need to explain that, you know, question me on my integrity. But for adolescents, yeah, uh, as you've, the example you've just given with your son, it's, um, they are actually at that 
place where they want to make the world a better place. So we better be measuring up to whatever integrity we're calling them into. We have to measure up to that. So it's uh, it's so great to hear that perspective of, a, of, a, of an adolescent. Thank you for sharing that story. Um, and so talking about integrity, um, question six, and I, we discussed briefly for the audience, we discussed briefly um, what Prudence wanted to talk about in this answer to question six. And it's a really, really good example. Um, and I can't wait to, for, her, for her to tell you the whole story. So question six um, is, when was the last time a child caught you out of integrity and questioned you on it? Okay, so I was driving. <laughs> in the night with my daughter in the car with me because she's always questioning me and giving me <laughs> directions sometimes yeah so on that day it was a little quiet because it was quite late and we were going home from a, a distant um, location i had worked and when we got to the last um, traffic light before it turned i didn't wait and then my daughter went, Mom, why did you do that? Yeah. So you went through the red light. Yes, I went through the red light. And she said, why did you do that? I said, don't worry, I'm going to explain. Just let's get out of here first. Yeah. You know, so when you know I moved farther ahead, I had to take my time to explain to her that um, sometimes at certain locations, especially at night, it's pretty dangerous to yeah. wait at the traffic lights to pass you because you could be attacked by robbers. Yeah, that's not peculiar to everywhere, but certain locations are just mm -hmm. um, that dangerous sometimes. So I had to explain that, that um, you just have to move on, but you have to be very sure that the other sides are free for you to go so you don't get involved in an accident. And with that, she was like, but it wasn't uh, green. You must move when it's only when it's green. <laughs> you mm. know? So when we got home, I let her relax and we went over it again until she, yeah. I even involved my husband in that conversation. Yeah. You know, and we were able to get her to understand that we don't just do that because we want to break the law. But yeah. certain times when it's not safe, you have to choose the most, uh, the, the safer option. Yeah, yeah. You're right. And how old is your daughter? Okay, now? at that time, she was about seven. Okay, yeah. So in the absolute, yeah, the absolute stage seven. of moral now, now development. Well. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, development of moral justice in that age, yeah, so, so, so important. Um, and as she was seven, I'd be interested, um, how, uh, how much did she know about sort of potential dangers at that age? You know, how did you explain to her that, that it could be dangerous in certain parts without, you know, sort of scaring her? Because often in that age, I mean, and my daughter, she's just starting to realize about safety and things like that but, and without freaking them out you know it's sort of as you said being honest but not freaking out. how did you have that conversation okay so there's a story about how i got my husband and i got attacked once um i was pregnant with her mm -hmm. when um, we were driving home one night and robbers stopped us at gunpoint it was very traumatic it was very uh, it's not something i want to always you know go back to yeah. but then um the car was taken we managed to just get ourselves out of the car on hurt so she's been told that story because my little boy remembers that story clearly because yeah. she was about three plus yeah and how he manages to remember that incident i can't explain but he remembers, he tells the sister about that story. So I had to relate that. Remember the story about how we were robbed when I was pregnant with you? 
Yeah. You don't want that kind of a thing to happen. And as a matter of fact, that happened because um, one of the robbers hit on the car body and said, oh, you're tired or something. And we stopped. Yeah. And that's how they gained access to the car, took our valuables, took the car away, and we just got out of the car. You know, so she had that story and then she was able to relate. Yeah. yeah. And then for news going around, there's a few, every family maybe at one point or the other experienced that kind of thing or you would have heard about it. So in the school, they also teach about how you can be safe. Like okay. you don't open your yeah. doors to strangers. Yeah. Um, you don't speak to strangers or you don't, you know, things like that. So it wasn't so much of a difficult um, scenario yeah. to explain oneself yeah. out of, yes. So she yeah. was able to understand that yeah. at certain times, you just have to pick the safer option. Yeah. And then African children are pretty smart because they get to experience a lot of things um, at very young age. Yeah. Life, life happens. And they get to see a whole lot. Yeah. Um, we are still growing and developing in terms of child protection and yeah. all of the things that go around it. So a whole lot of children are quite exposed to things they are not supposed to ex be exposed to, sadly. Yeah. 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 That's the hard part, isn't it? When, um, when you're doing the work that that you that you're doing you know you're it can feel overwhelming because you're one person with one school and you want to once your heart goes into this work you want to help everyone um thank you for sharing that story it's a difficult um it's a difficult story um and actually the question question seven was how did you explain yourself when you're out of integrity but we've we've covered that is there anything else that um how long did it take you for your daughter to process the traffic light? Is that something that she reminded you of another time, or do you think do you think okay, she processed so, it? Or okay, so even in recent times, um, when we move, at certain places that are not well lit, she says, "Mommy, do you think it's okay to wait?" <laughs> she mm. remembers that, and she asks, "Do you think it's okay to wait?" or do you want to yeah. check if it's, it's all clear so we can just drive through? Yeah. So she remembers that story very well. But now with um, a better understanding to be able to advise on should we go or should we not go? Yeah. She, you knows, said, she knows that you're not supposed to go past the red light. Yeah. yeah. As you said, you explained that the safest option is always the option to take. Yeah. Lovely. Um, and so for question eight, please, and this is a really difficult one for every guest I know. Um, so it's probably the question is today at this moment in time, what is your favorite Dr. Montessori quote? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I have several, but yeah. <laughs> several I mean, hundred, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> when you wake me up from my sleep or any time, the first one is by Dr. Maria Montessori's quote I'm going to think about is free the child's potential mm. and you're going to liberate him to the world. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yes. Yeah. Free the child's potential. <laughs> I always, and that's um, something that drives me to do what I do in my school. Yes. Because what we're doing is to help the child liberate their inner being yeah. so they can get to the heights of wherever they want to, yeah. to go. They can do whatever they want to do, they can attain whatever heights, whatever, you know accelerate whatever they want to do yeah so nothing will hold them the, back yeah in serving the needs of those children doing what you ought to do as a Montessori adult yeah 
I love that. Yes. Another brilliant quote. Um, so for question um, nine, Prudence, we'd all love to hear, what is your deepest desire for Montessori in the future? Hmm. <laughs> that is a huge question for mm -hmm. me. <laughs> so yeah, it's like personally in uh, Lagos, in Nigeria, in Africa, in the world. I can't, I can't, I can't, right, I can't even absorb taking that question enough because yeah. Um, a, few, a few months ago, when I was driving to work, driving to school, I had a nudge in my spirit that said something to me about bringing Montessori to Africa in a way that it becomes a legacy. So let me use the word that actually occurred to me on that day, yes. like prudence, you need to build a Montessori village. Oh. So like a mini city that has everything Montessori and children can come from far and near, whether they can afford to pay or not, yeah. and just come and be developed. Come like we said about the quotes and be freed. Yeah. And just, you know how you let a kite just- Yes. Yes. Just. Yeah let let go so like have a a gigantic montessori um, facility with every child developmental um space available to aid african children to be able to develop in a proper way i know when I heard that in my spirit, I was like, how on earth are you going to do that? You know, just like when I started the school, it wasn't like I had enough capacity in terms of financing, in yeah. terms of other trained adults to support me in my dream. But I just knew that for me to change my world, I say my world because the world is so um, huge, and starting from your own little space makes it the whole world. So for me to change my world is to just begin from where I am. And that's how come I dove in without having all the finances, without having all the adults, uh, trained adult support, without having uh, even material um, to work with. I just dove in and began to build on it. So that's the same thing that, you know, I'm thinking about as you asked me that question, I know that it's achievable because if I could achieve establishing the school from nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah, and thank God uh, the BMF, um, Black Montessori Educational Fund. Um, yeah. Yeah, they were very supportive because, um, the others. So it's not very easy to do. And then to think about a Montessori village for Africa in Nigeria, it's a really big dream. Um, when you go around, you see a lot of schools with Montessori attached to the names. I remember mm -hmm. in my training, I was told that Montessori, because of the time of war and all the chaos at that time, gender uh, bias and the rest of it, yeah. She did not patent the name Montessori. So everyone can use it. And that's it. That's the way it is here. Everyone can yeah. actually use the name Montessori, but they are not actually developing the child's potential as should be. So my dream is to have a humongous um, facility for children to just come from far and near, have a training center within train adults to be able to guide the children and yeah. to just keep going and make a better Africa in the next maybe 25, 30 mm -hmm. years, 40, 50, and maybe a hundred years <laughs> or more. Wow.
What a vision. That's really so special and achievable. As you said before your school, you, it's, everything seems impossible. Was it Nelson Mandela that said everything seems impossible until it's done? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And that, that's my little um, secret on my pillow when I sleep at night. <laughs> That's in your prayers. I can yeah. feel that. I can really, I can feel that um, from your heart and from your song. And I can, and I know that that feeling is, um, means that it's going to happen. It's, you can feel from your energy that that's going to happen. And so, Prudence, so you, you spoke of a, a Montessori village, which I just love the way you've said that as, um, I think the, the words you said were, and children come from far and near, whether or not they can pay. And that, yes. so whether or not they can afford it, that, that's what we can, can aspire to, isn't it? Just, for um, I was listening to a podcast the other day talking about how in the Netherlands, you know, in Holland, Montessori is part of the, the public system. So you can, children can attend a Montessori school, you know, a government school, as it were, a non-fee a non paying school. And um, wouldn't that be incredible if that was just the norm, as you said, just exactly governments to be offering Montessori education, authentic Montessori education, as a way of life, as part of their commitment to the people of their country, you know, whether it's Nigeria or whether it's the UK or I'm in the UAE now, you know, whether it's Dubai, you know, that is, that is a, a legacy, as you said, right at the beginning of, uh, of, the, of that question, yeah. So I, 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 I want to point out something in that. I, I looked in, like, as a school, we must work with the government's, like, state curriculum. Yes. It will shock you. Well, I was shocked to see that every aspect of that curriculum had Montessori elements built in it of the government curriculum. I was shocked to my bones. But then it's not implemented in the public schools. And I'm wondering, how do you draw up a curriculum that is not implemented as you know, a state or a nation? Yes. So which means that um, the government within my country have the right people in place, they have consulted with probably the right personnel who have given the right advice and then documented these things. Yes. The gap between that and the child is implementation. Yeah. And it's that gap I really hunger and yeah. just to feel as a practitioner. And so what... Do you feel prudence? What are the barriers to that then? Why, why is it not being delivered? Why is it not being implemented? So if the intention is there and it's written as as the as the curriculum for, for Nigerian um, public schools, what, what do you see are the barriers? Or the I'm block? not sure. I'm not sure, but I think that maybe some consultants have done their work and moved on. Mm -hmm. And then um, the next level of people who are in charge have no clue maybe professionals yeah. need to be on that board um i really don't know but i was really surprised to see that there was so much montessori element in the curriculum but i know that's not what is being practiced on a day to day in the public schools yeah it's a, I would really love to see it as a charter, you know, like they have the uh, public charter. I yeah. would really like to see Montessori as a public charter in my country and beyond and in other African countries yeah. so that the children are better served. Yeah. Because if you really want a great country, you need to invest in the children. Yeah. yeah. 
And Nigeria is a booming country, really, isn't it? Yes. Um, so as the, the, the human capital, the, the, as you say, building a great country comes from your, your humans, the people that are there. So it's just logical isn't it that we begin that we begin with the earliest children to to as you say build a great country or nation or, or um yeah well my my question question 10 the last question is what do you see is your role in achieving this this deep desire for montessori i think we're going to have to clone you so you can be on the government board to uh, <laughs> implement this quickly i'm just thinking okay how what can we do she's already working 18 hour days i'm not sure she's so i think cloning is the only option <laughs> <laughs> so i need to have like 10 other prudences yeah. <laughs> to be able to run this and then i'll be able to serve the government on what they need <laughs> okay so just like i said earlier start with your little space you know, I believe in starting in your little corner. I used to know a song about missionary when I was much younger. And it says something about you in your small corner and I in mine. Together we're working and making this world a better place. Mm. Yeah, so I, I, I think um, my role is to just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, serving Montessori um, children in my space, expanding it as much as possible, yes. um, um, enlightening more adults and um, and I don't want to use the word cooks and introducing them to the Montessori world, um, opening up, opening up uh, training opportunities for them because the more trainers and the more tr uh, trained adults we have the more children we're able to serve. Yeah, so yes. my role will be to um, do as much more as I can and keep spreading until every home, every family is touched with the right uh, developmental method. Yeah. I can feel that stardust from you, as you say, like, from family to family i think there's some prudent stardust there that you can like sprinkle <laughs> yes <laughs> yes we're already doing that in some way like in the school where i uh, in our school currently i take the lights in onboarding fresh parents like those who have never heard about montreal and they have no bias about oh i want my child to write at age three or three age four yeah. or i want my child to do mathematics or science or so i take delight in um helping them understand what this pedagogy really means yeah. and how it's supposed to impact us as a family and then the children and how we respect them because respect is one huge uh, missing part of our culture in Africa. I say that in quote because we have a huge respect um, culture, but respecting the child is a different ball game entirely. We have a, a huge respect culture that disrespects the child. So there has to be that um, trajectory. There has to be a change of that aspect to be able to see the child you know, for who the child really is, as Maya Montessori states, um, a child who deserves to be loved and respected, a child who deserves an explanation, you know, for their own um, communication if they actually need those explanations. Yeah. So not just doling it down to the child like we do yeah. culturally and naturally, we have to be able to bring them into our conversations, bring them into our decision-making, bring yes. them to our, our most respected zones where we kind yes. of like prohibit children from, yeah. Isn't that interesting, as you say, a, a, a culture of respect, but that disrespects children? Yeah. So I, I hear parents telling me, 
um, I'm not going to bring my child if you're not going to discipline that child. Of course, not understanding what discipline is from yeah. Yeah. my story perspective. We're, we're starting with the word discipline from such a different point. Exactly. Yeah, that, like yeah. sitting down the child to work, you know, all long hours to be able to achieve a particular task or whooping the child on their bum or their palms to yes, get them. Yeah. To, like, no, you're not going to get that. Excuse me. <laughs> we're yeah. not going to do that. We're just going to make your child develop naturally and we're going to help them to be the best version of themselves we're going to make them to be responsible but they'll be able to hold their head up high and nobody's going to be able to put them down yeah yeah and do you find you have um parents who come in you know as you say off the street as it were that um are curious but come from that very different place of i want discipline and you know smacking is fine or what have you do you find that that's is that the majority because you said most of your parents are are ones who have no bias either way with Montessori do you find that that's a predominant sense that more sort of um traditional approach to education or do you feel it's progressing a little what what's your sense oh yes um it's getting better because there's more enlightenment um more younger parents in um, their 30s yeah um, maybe yeah 30s actually more respectful to their children i think because of the global um space like a lot of them are online they read yeah. up on parenting or like of course my mother wouldn't have gone online to learn skills about parenting okay. It's what the grandmother passes down to the mother that the other one learns and then passes yeah. to, yeah. So yeah. things are changing, but not as fast as they should. So we're having that conversation and gladly, we're having parents who are actually willing to learn. Mm. And you know, they come in with that mind. And then, so I, I say to them, if you have problems, you can always come back and we, we can help you um, understand how to deal with it in a Montessori way, such that nobody's broken. Yeah, and it's, it's been working. I've had at least a couple of parents come up to me to say, oh, I have trouble getting my child dressed because they won't want to wear this one or that one or that one. And I go, okay, so here's choice issue. Make limited choice option and then let yeah. them choose and they come back to say oh it's working yeah. so we actually have parents who are um, open-minded and they are ready to learn and they are getting results and they are happy with the results that they are getting as well that's the best feedback isn't it when we can um give parents that gift of trusting themselves and going okay I, I i know all of this inside myself but i but we're we're just here to to help them see what they know already you know what they know in their in their heart without the side of it where we're just doing the same as as other other people have done before yeah thank you so much prudence wow what <laughs> incredible answers and so um uplifting as you say for for montessori in nigeria for montessori in africa your vision is so inspiring um and you know from your own experience what can be achieved it's anything is possible that's right i believe it <laughs> thank you so much and would um you like to share how people can contact you, what your Instagram handle is, your website, if people want to get in touch with you from around the world, because I'm sure there's going to be people who want to get in touch with you from around the world after hearing you speak so passionately. Um, how can people in Lagos get hold of you? How can people around the world get hold of you and learn more about your, uh, about your work? And um, do you have workshops online that that can support parents? What, what are you working on at the moment that, that you'd love to tell us about? Okay, so um, 
currently um, I have a couple of well, a number of expecting mother, expectant mothers mm -hmm. that I want to work with them from um, when the babies are born. So like coach on how to raise the Montessori, to, yeah. to raise the Montessori child from when they're born. Yeah. So they don't struggle to say, oh, I don't want this Montessori for my child. So they can already see the beautiful, um, um, the, the, the beautiful results of Montessori from when the child is baby, you know, before they begin to um, enroll them for school. So that's, that's my newest project. But away from that, um, I have um, a platform for people who want to know about Montessori to um, learn about Montessori. I'm also on Facebook. Um, the parents' prerogative, D, letter D, parents' prerogative, where we've been posting um, so, um, programs, things happening at our school. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, we get to involve the public if we're having like a workshop so they can log in on our Zoom room to benefit from um, those workshops. Um, we hope to grow the community to be able to have a space for parents to come have um, their children, for parents to get all the information they need for their children to be well developed, whether physically, emotionally, yeah. mentally, cognitively, and otherwise. Yeah. So basically, and then we can be reached at Moma Hill Montessori School. It's uh, located at 26 Odozi Street, Ojodu, that's in Lagos mainland. Um, we are on Instagram, Moma Hill School. Uh, we are on, um, our website is uh, www.momahill.com. Yes, and uh, our phone numbers as well. I think I can give you those to put on the screen if you want to. Right, we'll do that. I'll share all of the information and the links to your, your website and your Instagram handle as well when, um, when we publish. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. For sharing um, everything. Yes. <laughs> and um, it's just, yeah, it's just so um, rich to hear you speak of, of your journey and the work you're doing. And um, thank you so much. And for your personal stories of with your children as well, which are really, <laughs> which are really, which are really, really good, particularly with your with your son. <laughs> um, our children just have this, as you said, you know, if you weren't a Montessori parent, you would have responded differently because that was a lack of respect. And it's just yeah. so wonderful how they show us the ways that we're not being loving or the ways we're not being respectful or the ways that we're not being an advocate for somebody else. It's just this mirror, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me for the Montessori mission. 10 questions, 10 Montessorians, 10 perspectives from 10 communities. Uh, Prudence, have a wonderful weekend and thank you so much. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. And to everyone watching at home, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Prudence has been episode nine of the Montessori Mission and I'll see you all soon for episode 10. Thank you so much. Take care.